Hello, it's Tim Spector here of the Zoe COVID study, giving you this week's update. Plenty to talk about as usual. We'll be talking about sore throats. Are they a real indicator of COVID or not? We'll be talking about the new potential uh, sub-variant of Omicron, which we're calling BA2. Is that set to take over soon? We'll be looking at reinfections. We're seeing different accounts of how common it is to get reinfected a few months after uh, getting COVID. We'll also be uh, looking in detail at some of the responses to the wider health studies that over 800,000 of you signed up for. And this is uh, a great chance for you to vote on the research projects you want to work together on. The current leader is the immune system and how that affects your risk of heart disease but uh, close behind are the gut microbiome and cancer and uh, an important one on dementia. So look at those, there's still time to vote and uh, prioritize how we do our research. But this is a great opportunity for those who haven't signed up to get involved in the wider health study so we can put all this knowledge that we've got together from fighting COVID into fighting other common diseases and giving you education and filling you in about them on the way so you can help yourself and your family. Now let's get back to COVID because uh, as always there's plenty to discuss. As I predicted last week with the uptick in children we're seeing quite a major increase across the board in cases unfortunately and this is sort of inevitable once we see that rise in children as we're finding out. And what we're seeing from this graph is that the uptick is uh, greater in those without vaccinations compared to those with at least two vaccinations, but both are still going up. And that's actually around an 11% increase on last week, which is a lot. And we're seeing figures around 160,000 uh, cases a day. And we believe the official government estimates, because of the way uh, the data is collected, are underestimating this. Now, the uh, percentage with two doses is about 34%, and that's slightly down on where it was. Now, um, we're going to look at why this is, and it could be that a lot of the uh, unvaccinated people uh, in that group are getting reinfected more than you would expect. And we'll be digging into that deeper in a second. But essentially, what you need to know is that about one in 30 people uh, currently have symptomatic COVID uh, and the highest rates are in the northeast and northwest of England where rates are even higher. So there's still a lot of it around. Let's look at hospitalizations because uh, we know that cases don't really tell the, the full picture and uh, what we want to do is to keep those hospitalizations rate down. The latest government data is pretty reassuring really. It shows an average of 1,800 people admitted to hospital with COVID which is down on last week uh, and we think that's still an overestimate because probably about half of those cases were reported as being COVID but actually were, had already recovered from it or picked it up incidentally while they're in hospital. So probably only about half of them directly relates to COVID, which I think uh, is pretty manageable when you divide that across the whole country. Uh, more reliable is the number of people on ventilators, uh, which is quite a clear statistic. And that's 598 on ventilators, which is down 100 from last week. So uh, this is all good news, but of course the recent increase in new cases is probably going to put that back where it was uh, in, in a few weeks time. Looking at deaths, we're seeing 1,700 a week, which is up uh, slightly again uh, on last week's, um, probably because of the large numbers of people being diagnosed over the Christmas period. Many of these may not be directly related to COVID. There's obviously still a bit of um, uh, in, indecision about 
how to call these cases and it's hard to compare these nationally. As I mentioned previously, the, the current data includes everyone who dies within 28 days of a positive test. And uh, more importantly, I think, is the fact that the government released data showing that when you look at excess deaths compared to uh, the average of years before the pandemic, we're still actually at lower rates in those excess deaths. And I think that is the statistic that is most reassuring. It was only for a limited time in January. Let's hope that uh, data continues. So let's now look at what's going on in the different age groups. As we reported last week, that uptick in children has become uh, a real steep increase, as you can see from that blue line. And that's driving, I think, a lot of the national figures here because you can see the other groups in the 35 to 55 year olds also uh, creeping up uh, from this, this spread from kids to parents and then uh, onto their families. The other over 55 groups, the decreases we were seeing last week have plateaued out and we have to wait and see what happens whether uh, this has a, a big impact on those groups but hopefully as happened uh, before at Christmas, it didn't majorly impact those groups, but something to be keeping an eye on. So looking internationally, seeing how the UK is faring, we can see that it's doing pretty well in terms of its number of new cases, although they're very high in the UK, uh, the, and although they're probably underestimated, still at the lower end of most of the countries we've been comparing with the last few months. And you see some of the, the countries that are doing worst in terms of total numbers, like Portugal and Denmark, are the highest uh, vaccinated. And countries that have low vaccination rates actually have relatively lower uh, testing rate, uh, test positives like the USA. But the real test is hospitalizations and healthcare problems. And if we look at the next graph, which given all the caveats that I've mentioned about the records not only in the UK but in pretty much every country, we can see a bit of a mismatch between cases and hospitalizations and UK is doing about average and the USA is, is still way out there with very high uh, healthcare burden due to the low vaccination rates that are obviously affecting the severity of uh, the disease even though Omicron has, has taken over pretty much well everywhere. So showing the power of the vaccine to prevent deaths and hospitalizations, although direct comparisons are always tricky. Um, worth looking at Denmark in detail because we saw those really high rates of new cases and we've seen fairly modest levels of hospitalizations. What's been driving those increased new cases is a new form of Omicron. Uh, in the UK, we have the BA1 form of Omicron. This is a, a genetic variant of it called BA2. And it has about 20 different mutations to uh, the original. It was, it's been most prevalent in Denmark where they've been logging it very carefully. And it's now over 50% of cases. So it's, it's pretty much displaced uh, the BA1 Omicron, the original Omicron there, meaning it must be more transmissible. And current estimates are that it's about 5% of the UK uh, data currently. It's, if it goes on this trajectory, it could well uh, take over uh, within a month. So we need to know much more about it. And all we really know at the moment is that, yes, it's more competitive, it's quite similar, but it's also different. And so far, Denmark hasn't had a major problem with deaths or hospitalizations, suggesting it is not more severe. Hopefully that stays the case and we'll have to wait and see. That's why we really need your data on symptoms, etc., to see if it's any different to the previous forms of Omicron. Uh, do sign up for the webinar that I've got with uh, Professor Wendy Barclay, uh, who's an expert on this, and we discuss all the latest on Omicron and the variants. 
and there's some links later in on this. Now let's talk about reinfection rates. Obviously there are many people saying they've got it again or there's some people have said they've got it three or four times and others not. So what is the, the true rate and what happens if you've had Delta? Are you in any way protected against Omicron? And are we going to keep getting infected every four or five months every time there's a new variant? Well, the this graph shows we've been recording the new infections and how many people had a, a documented uh, confirmed case before and in the last uh, week or so, we're running at about 7% of people have had uh, an infection more than three months previously. And this is in line with a, a UK HSA report from the SIREN study that gave us results about one in 10 people uh, were previously infected. And there have been some reports from the REACT study that gave a very different picture, uh, which has confused a lot of people. Uh, just to remind you, they, they test a subsample of 100,000 people. They found 4,000 who were currently positive, and then by a Mori poll, asked them if they'd previously been infected. And that's where they got this, uh, I think, very inflated figure of 65% that uh, I don't really trust until it's been replicated. But um, even one in 12 people being reinfected is still quite a lot and does show that you can't rely on natural immunity alone. And uh, that's why these vaccines are still really useful. Um, well, the government currently don't count reinfections in their, in their data, which uh, means that they will be underestimating those, those cases. But following pressure from groups like ours, they are going to introduce that and say we'll get a more a better idea of what the real numbers of cases are there in future. Now let's talk about what we know about symptoms of current Omicron. Well, it's 661 days now since we reported the different types of uh, COVID symptoms, still waiting for the government to change their attitude on this, but we'll continue to educate people and here are the 20 top symptoms as of this week. And while many have remained the same, we've seen a significant increase in reports of sore throats and hoarse voice, so that the frequency of those is, is commoner than it was. These are much commoner now with Omicron than they were with uh, other variants, particularly Delta. So uh, sore throats are really key sign of Omicron and people describe it as being a scratchy type of uh, sore throat or very painful, something they're not really found before with with other colds. And uh, we're looking into other rare symptoms uh, because people do report these through social media and say, oh, certain doctors reporting seeing lots of this kind of thing. Uh, lots of reports of people more gut symptoms, particularly in kids. But uh, when we look at our data so far, we haven't shown significant differences. Really important, uh, if you ha are parents of kids, do report for them. It's incredibly useful. And as, as we've seen before, there are like a, a early warning sign of what's going on with new variants. So what you hear on social media with anecdotes uh, often turns out not to be true when we look at it in more detail. Now, the GI symptoms, uh, we, we did look at uh, people who are testing negative, uh, was there more GI symptoms now than there was, say, last year? We found slightly more, but only a few percent. So it could be that there are other GI viruses uh, circulating around, which we're just not swabbing and picking up. So we're still investigating this, so do keep sending us your data. And some gut symptoms are obviously associated with Omicron and others uh, may not be. And we're also interested in, in rare rashes, which are also reported to us. So do uh, report these in the app. And if you can, send us photos and experiences on, on Twitter. And there's a link in the description uh, to deal with that. 
and we have some new information about duration. Uh, we've been talking about this, but our data is getting clearer now. We've matched about 3,000 of your contributions uh, with two or three doses. Uh, 3,000 people had it with Omicron, 3,000 people had it with Delta. And from this data, we found that about 70% of people with Omicron recover within a week, 91% uh, within two weeks, and 12% within a day. And I think that the other, for me, the, the, the key is that under Delta, it was only about 15% got better within three days, so the minority. Whereas with Omicron, it's 33% uh, a third. And I think that's a big difference. So many people uh, will get better, test negative, and get back to normal life uh, within those five days. Uh, we need to point out this data isn't for unvaccinated people that will probably have a longer duration and more severe. Uh, or people who had a single dose. So in conclusion, there's good news and bad news this week. The bad news is that cases have started to come up again and we have very high rates of Omicron and around one in 30 in the country and it's not going to go away anytime soon. The better news is that it still appears to be relatively mild in most people it's not causing major hospitalizations and deaths. And overall, excess deaths in January were less than you would have expect for an average uh, winter. Now, the main problem I think we're facing is staff absences in, in critical services in the NHS and in care homes. And there's increasing evidence that that is now improving rapidly. We hope that the shorter isolation periods will help that uh, and speed that up. And we have to be also be aware that reinfections are commoner than people thought. This figure of one in around one in 10 people is quite reasonable. And so just having had Delta before doesn't mean that you aren't going to get Omicron. Having had uh, the uh, first version of Omicron doesn't mean you're not going to get the new version of Omicron. Obviously you need to keep uh, an eye on the data but let's not make any assumptions. Now we're trying to get things back to normal life but it is tough because despite a lack of official uh, restrictions now places like my mother's care home have decided to lock their doors for the last month because uh, staff and patients have gone down with Omicron and I think there comes a time when we start to need to open up more, realise there is some risk and that the risks of isolating uh, older or vulnerable people starts to uh, be greater than the benefits. So I, I do look forward to uh, seeing my mum again properly. Omicron is obviously not over yet. Cases are going to be around for a while. We need to start uh, living with it uh, and realising that whilst cases are high, we have to be careful, but we don't have to stop living as long as we all behave responsibly. So please remember to like and subscribe this channel and video, share it with people who, who don't know about us and you want to help log their data. Uh, keep an eye on our website and others for webinars, etc. And stay safe and keep logging. Thank you.